Ever since IDW started creating Sonic comics back in 2018, they've managed to tell compelling stories with characters that we know and love. But in that very same time, they've also managed to introduce a plethora of characters unique to the comics themselves that have become fan favorites in their own right. If you were to show someone who wasn't a Sonic fan these characters and ask them to pick apart the IDW original characters from Sonic's cast of friends from the games, they would be hard pressed to do so. The creators of the IDW Sonic comics have done a great job seamlessly integrating these new characters and making them feel like they belong in this universe. It's done so well that many of us want to see these characters have their time to shine in the video games. So today, I'll be breaking down my list for the IDW characters I'd like to see appear in Sonic games. Starting off the list is one of the most unique villains in the IDW comics that I really believe Sonic Team would have a fun time incorporating into the games. Mimic is a mercenary with the power to shapeshift, much like Mystique from the X-Men or even Clayface from Batman. This unique power that Mimic possesses got me thinking about how cool it would be to see a side quest line involving tracking him down in the next Sonic game. With Sonic Team exploring open zone gameplay, which plays closely to an open world game, I think they should try more side quests that involve other characters. Imagine having to track down Mimic, who has been stealing from or attacking Sonic's friends. With his ability to shapeshift, they could throw in some really cool twists along the way. Maybe one of Sonic's friends from the beginning of the story was Mimic all along. We could even see him using the form he takes to infiltrate the diamond cutters in the comics. Now, one of the coolest things in Batman Arkham Asylum was seeing Clayface impersonate other characters in an attempt to get Batman to free him, and it makes me think about all the cool things that they could do with Mimic. And heck, even if they throw in more IDW villains like him, we could also have an Arkham-style lockup where we see all the villains Sonic has to be in the game being held somewhere, possibly with the restoration. Mimic has an interesting skill set, and with his ability to shapeshift, I think he would bring a breath of fresh air to the villain roster in the games. He alone could even change the entire tone of the game. I wouldn't want to turn a corner and see this guy staring back at me. Now, in the comics, he's been involved in some of the darker stories, and because of that is a cause of contention between characters. Something that should also be noted is that Mimic does not like Eggman. Although he worked for him once in the comics, he now tries to avoid him when possible, and I think that this could play out as a cool dynamic in the game, because while while there have been a few exceptions in the past, most villains work for or alongside Eggman, even if it's against their own will. So seeing a character that isn't as powerful as Eggman running his own small side plans would be a really nice change of pace. While I don't believe that Mimic could be the main villain of a Sonic game, he is definitely interesting enough to get his own set of side quests that could lead to a boss fight. Next on my list might be a bit of an odd choice, but I think she would make a great fit for facilitating quests in the game. That character is none other than Jewel the Beetle. As the current director of the Restoration, Jewel is very organized and has helped with coordinating plans alongside Amy Rose, which is why I think that Jewel would fit very nicely into a Sonic game as a character that would give out quests and help players understand mechanics much like Omachao did in the past. In the IDW run, Jewel has sent many teams on missions before when she gets information of things that need help dealing with. Interacting with side characters in games and running quests for them can be a fun addition, and if done correctly, it makes the world feel more lifelike and brings heart to the characters. I think that a good example of this is Sonic Unleashed. It did a pretty good job with giving the player a reason to talk to side characters and complete quests for them. This is something that I'd love to see return in the next open world or open zone game, and it would be great to see Jewel as a main character who helped us with this. In the comics, Jewel is a character who isn't very fond of fighting, so having her in a role where she can avoid that suits her character perfectly. She could come in over an inner Intercom and speak to us in the open world, pushing the player towards the next point of interest. Much like the intercom sections from Sonic Forces, she could appear to the player while they're exploring the zones. Jewel is a very underrated and not very well known character, and I think that having her in a game could lead to a lot of people finding a relatable hero. Not to mention, I personally think that Jewel would be a bit more bearable to listen to rather than someone like Omachao. Now, one thing that I find interesting about her character is that even though she isn't a fighter, she is still a hero and has proven herself to have a huge heart. I think that this trait of hers would be able to shine through even if she isn't out in the open world with us. The next character that I would love to see would also be 
the first character on this list that I believe should be playable. Tangle the Lemur is an eccentric character who reminds me a lot of Sonic with her boundless energy and never give up attitude. However, with her long bushy tail that can stretch and grapple, I think that Tangle could have an incredibly fun and diverse moveset that would set her apart from any other character in the games. I can already imagine how fun it would be to grapple through the sky using her tail and the different platforming challenges that Sonic Team could incorporate with this mechanic. A ton of games now have grapple hooks, heck even the new Sonic Superstars game seems to, and I think it would make a lot of sense to have Tangle in these games for grappling. Now, we all know that exploration played a big part in Sonic Frontiers. Every zone had different secrets and platforming challenges to overcome. While this was a ton of fun with Sonic and his moves, especially with the addition of the spin dash, I think that having more characters with different moves such as Tangle could lead to even more fun and of course allows for Sonic Team to add more secrets to the game which can only be accessed by certain characters. In the comics, Tangle is often forced to use her tail in creative ways to take down her foes, and I think that this would make for a fun combo system in the games. Similar to how Sonic's werehog arms could stretch and grow in wild and wacky ways, I think that this could suit Tangle's playstyle, with different button inputs giving her tail a different combo to take down her foes, or give her extra height for jumps. There is a lot you could do with this character based off of what we have from the comics, so I'd personally hate to see Tangle sidelined as a non-playable character if she were added to the games. Now, it might come as a bit of a surprise that I don't want the next character to be playable. At least not initially, but hear me out. Whisper the Wolf is a Wispin expert, and in Sonic Forces we got to use these weapons ourselves. So it would make sense to make Whisper playable, right? Well, I personally think that Wispins need to be retooled a bit before we have characters use them again. The way that Wispin weaponry could just tear through Eggman's units and forces felt way too overpowered, and lore-wise didn't quite make any sense. If the Rebellion had weaponry that was that powerful, how did Eggman manage to take over in the first place? Until that is refined, I believe that Whisper's standoffish attitude would make for better use as a mysterious character in the game. In a lot of games that I play, there are mysterious characters that foreshadow events that are to come. I would love to see Sonic Team take Whisper in this route. In Batman Arkham City, Azrael can be seen on the rooftops watching Bruce Wayne from the beginning of the game. This mysterious character could be found later on, and hints at the events coming in the last game in the trilogy. Asriel's introduction into Arkham games had fans speculating for years about what his appearance meant and led to him becoming a more popular character in the fandom. While much is known about Whisper to us comic readers, there are still many who are unfamiliar with her and would get excited to learn more if she was presented correctly in the games. If Whisper had a minor role but one that was as cool as Asriel's, not only do I think that would suit her character, but it could also lead to her becoming playable in the future title, much like how Asriel was playable in Arkham Knight. Maybe she's watching Sonic from a distance and Sonic notices that some mysterious character is taking out Badnix, helping him along his journey. Environmental storytelling in games can go a long way to opening up the player's imagination, building hype. It could serve as a good introduction to Whisper's character for those who are unfamiliar with the comics. That's one reason I'm going to the Arkham games so much in my head. The Batman games did such a good job making obscure comic characters have a lasting impact on the player, and I think if done correctly, Sega would find a lot of success implementing their comic characters into the games. Side bosses in video games are sometimes more enjoyable than the ones that are featured in the main story. I believe that just like Mimic, Clutch would be a great character to introduce as one, or perhaps be given a role as a shady vendor. Now, Clutch isn't a character that's known for his prowess in combat, but he is a crafty crime boss who operates from the shadows. Most recently in the comics, we saw that Clutch hired Mimic to take down the diamond cutters from within, but he's also hired the likes of Rough and Tumble before to work for him. It could be interesting to see him have his own side characters that you would need to fight before getting to him. Clutch is very cunning, and in the comics was using bad nicks that were broken down and repurposed by him. This could be fun for the player to explore and find bad nicks that look worse for wear. Eventually, the player would have to go through a set of puzzles and obstacles in order to get to Clutch and take him down. Maybe you'd have to get to him a few times because he keeps escaping. In the comics, he was able to give the Chaotix to slip, so we know how crafty he is, even being able to detect Espio while he was cloaked. The puzzles in Sonic Frontiers were a good first step to what they could eventually become, and I think that having a small gauntlet of them could be fun to have to solve in order to reward yourself with taking Clutch down. However, the shady nature of Clutch reminded me so much of when I was very little and I'd go over to my friend Freddy's house to play Ratchet and Clank. In this game, we came upon a shady character that wanted an exorbitant amount of money for a weapon 
something called the Rhino. To this day, my friend and I still discuss this shady character and the gun that we never bought because we sucked at games back then, but I believe that Clutch could fill this character's role in the new game. Maybe there's a rare upgrade that you can get from Clutch, or somehow he manages to get an emerald and you have to buy it from him. Maybe he even scams you, taking your rings which leads to a fight. In the comics, Clutch was also very big on Chow racing and had plenty of Chow locked away. Maybe you can buy a rare Chow egg from him, but it's looked down upon by your companions, or he charges egregious prices for them. Either way you look at it, there's a lot that Sonic Team could do with this character. Of course you can't mention IDW villains without bringing up Starline, Kit, and Surge. These characters have played such an impactful role on the stories in the past year, and I think they could find mainstream appeal in the games. Starline is a rather interesting case, as currently in the run, it appears that he may be dead. If the story team wishes to leave Starline dead, I think it would still be a cool nod toward the character if they give him some sort of hidden audio file for the player to find. Much like the Eggman files that you can buy from Big and Frontiers, which detailed the creation of Sage and how Eggman starts to view her as a daughter, I believe that players could gain key insight on Surge and Kit from similar files of Starlines. In my opinion, this would be a good way to relay backstory to players who haven't kept up with the comics. These could even be in the form of mini cutscenes as well, but I think that the storytelling opportunities with this would be a great way to fill players in without forcing them to read a comic. Now, if they choose to bring Starline back, given that the way he died in the comics left his fate open-ended, Starline could fill the role of Eggman in a game. In the comics, Starline's egotistical bravado steals the show with every page that he's on. He's a character who is both enamored by Eggman and wants to usurp him. Imagining seeing Starline once again take control of the Eggman Empire becomes so much more interesting after seeing the relationship between Eggman, Sage, and Sonic. I could see Eggman and Sage once again seeking Sonic's aid to take down Starline who has gone mad with power. There's a ton they could do with Starline if they wish to bring him back, but what could be more interesting than seeing his return is seeing his creations. Surge and Kit are a pair much like Sonic and Tails, but those of us who have read the comics know just how unhinged they are. After being wronged and brainwashed by Starline, these two have started to descend into madness, not understanding their place in this world. That confusion, anger, and emotion is used to lash out upon anyone who seeks to challenge them. This alone could make for a very complex storyline where Sonic tries to help Surge and Kit, but at the same time is forced to fight them. It's all the more tragic that way and reminds me a lot of Spider-Man villains or Batman villains, where Peter Parker or Bruce Wayne know that these villains have good in them, but somewhere along the line, they lost their way. These two possess incredible power. Starline wanted to create an answer to Sonic and Tails, and his solution was to give them both cybernetic enhancements, making them near unkillable. But beyond that, he gave Surge speed to rival Sonic's incredible power. Alongside that, Surge is able to generate electricity, which pairs very well with her partner in crime, Kit. Now, Kit has a power that's a direct counter to Sonic, and that is Hydrokinesis. Sonic has always had a problem with water, so Kit's ability to control it much like a waterbender imposes a huge threat. Combine their powers and you have a highly conductive conduit to fry your enemies. Just ask Metal how deadly that combination is. These two would be great boss fights separately, but it would be a ton of fun if you had to take them on together at the same time. This would bring a unique dynamic to the boss fight where player choice could take the forefront. Whose moveset is giving you the most trouble? Kit's or surges, and based off of that, the player would be able to focus a target to get rid of one sooner. Maybe if you don't do this, you take risking a lot of damage from a combo attack from the two. So I have one last pick, and it's a very obscure one. Most Sonic fans love the music in just about every game, and in Sonic Frontiers Update 1, we were able to collect and listen to music from past games. Now branching off from that idea, I think it would be cool to incorporate some sort of radio station, much akin to other open world games. In the IDW comics, there is a very minor character called Knight the Owl, who is a radio host in Sunset City. I think it would be really cool to include this character to the games in a radio station setting where we can choose music. It doesn't even need to be a full-on shown character, but having a little voice coming in while we're selecting our music would be a very fun nod to us fans of the comics. Those are some of my picks that I think would make great inclusions to the games, but of course there are many more that I didn't name that I would still like to eventually see. IDW has really been able to capture the heart of the Sonic series and make it come to life on the pages, which makes me want to see these characters even more in the games. Let me know what characters from the IDW comics you would want to see most in the comments below. Make sure that you're subscribed in order to keep up to date with all things Sonic, as I'm sure we'll have a lot to break down. As always, I wish you all the best. Take care. Peace.